Particle physicists in the United States have tried to come up with a strategy to revitalize their research area, and their ideas are somewhat underwhelming. But let's have a look. Last week, a panel of scientists named the Particle Physics Project Prioritization Panel, or P5, signed onto a list of policy recommendations for the US Department of Energy and the National Science Foundation. And since five is such a nice number, they've come up with five priorities. Their highest priority after continued funding for already running projects is, interestingly enough, not a particle physics project. It's the Radio Telescope Array called CMBS-4, whose detectors would be distributed in Chile and Antarctica and possibly some other places. CMB stands for Cosmic Microwave Background and S4 means it's the fourth stage of an already existing project in stage two. The major purpose of this experiment would be to measure the polarization of the cosmic microwave background. The microwave background is the radiation that's left over from the hot plasma that was around in the early phases of the universe. The polarization of this radiation gives you an orientation for each patch of the sky. This orientation is partly caused by dust in the Milky Way, but partly it comes from fluctuations of space-time in the early universe. It's this signal from the space-time fluctuations that physicists are after. If you remember, this CMB polarization is what the BICEP experiment claimed to have found in 2014. But their detection turned out to be dust in the Milky Way, which prompted my friend and YouTube neighbor Brian Keating to write a book called Losing the Nobel Prize. They want to measure the imprint of the space-time fluctuations because, you see, their prediction of the most popular but unconfirmed theory about the beginning of the universe, inflation. The idea of inflation is that our universe was born out of quantum fluctuations of a field called the inflaton field. It supposedly caused a rapid expansion of the universe, so the universe inflates, thus the name. The inflaton later decays into normal matter, which is convenient because then it isn't around today to be detected. But the quantum fluctuations of the inflaton field should also cause fluctuations of space-time, and this should cause the polarization in the CMB that they're looking for. The devil is, as usual, in the details. The issue is that there are other ways to create these space-time fluctuations and the polarization that comes with them. It doesn't have to be inflation. And the other way around, there are some models for inflation in which the effect would be so small one wouldn't see it. So even if they can measure this signal, it would neither confirm nor falsify inflation. It's also somewhat surprising that particle physicists go for what's a cosmology experiment, but rumors say it's because the astro budget wouldn't completely fund the experiment, so they're helping out their friends, basically. But friends don't let friends look for inflatons. Okay, that was the top priority. Then let's look at the second one. The second one is an upgrade of the DUNE experiment. DUNE is the deep underground neutrino experiment currently under construction at Fermilab. Its task is to shoot a beam of neutrinos through Earth's crust to Sanford Lab in South Dakota, about 1,300 kilometers away. With that, particle physicists want to learn more about neutrinos, especially their role in CP violation. Some part Particle physicists think the CP violation is necessary to explain why there's more matter than antimatter in the universe. There's no reason it should have been the same amount other than that particle physicists think that's what nature should have done. So I think there's nothing to explain and it's a pseudo problem. But then I wasn't asked for an opinion. I wonder why. But why would they give so high priority to upgrading a project that hasn't even yet been completed? It's because Dune has become a major headache for Fermilab. The management has been miserable and the cost has spiraled out of control. Dune was originally proposed with a cost projection of about $1 billion, but it kept getting more expensive. The Department of Energy put a cap on $3.1 billion. I have a lot of sympathy for that. If someone was spending my money at $3.1 billion, I'd also get a little antsy. 
Fermilab got a new director, a bad grade from the DOE, and is about to get a new management. That budget cap, however, means that the project would have to be shrunk so much it wouldn't be able to measure the CP violation before 2035 or so. So what particle physicists say is that they want the project to be built as originally planned, despite the ballooning cost, because otherwise chances are that some other country manages to do it first, which, from the point of view of international competitiveness would blow the entire money into the wind. This makes me think that the likely reason for making this a priority is the sunk cost fallacy, also known as throwing good money after bad. The third priority is to support the international efforts to build a huge particle collider that would produce a lot of Higgs bosons to further study them. They didn't put a new US-based collider among the top priorities, but they have them in a later recommendation. They want to build a muon collider in a project they call the Muon Shot, a pun on Moonshot, the title of a book about the American Apollo program that brought the first people to the moon. Muons are elementary particles in the standard model of particle physics. That they're elementary gives the muon collider a big advantage over hadron colliders like the LHC. That's because hadrons, like the protons that the LHC accelerates and collides, are composite particles. If you collide them, you divide up the entire energy into collisions between the constituents. It's not very efficient. In a muon collider, you get more of the energy from the particles directly into the collision. So a muon collider of 10 TeV could do much more than the LHC already. So this is what the muon shot is all about. But at the moment, they're just saying they need to make plans and the project itself is not a priority. So let's get back to the priority list. The fourth item is a dark matter direct detection experiment reaching the neutrino fog and preferably sighted in the US. Dark matter is one of the explanations for some astrophysical observations, such as the two fast rotations of galaxies. Particle physicists like the idea that these observations can be explained by a new type of particle called dark matter, if that exists, which it may not. The trouble is, no experiment has found those particles. And each time an experiment comes back empty-handed, they say the particle is a little more weakly interacting, like this Xenon NT experiment that was upgraded from Xenon 10 to Xenon 100 to Xenon 1T and now to Xenon NT without finding anything. For a long time, particle physicists said there'd be an end to this building of ever larger detectors because eventually the hypothetical particle would have to be more weakly interacting than neutrinos. So the neutrinos then create so much noise that you can't find the dark matter particle. This is what's called the neutrino fog. But some others pointed out this just means you need to figure out how to subtract the neutrino noise so you can find the supposed dark matter signal in the data. This new experiment, which they want to build, would be reaching this neutrino fog. Of course, there's still no reason to think that there's actually a new particle to find there, so I continue to be unimpressed. Let's then look at the fifth and final priority. That's an upgrade of IceCube, which is a detector at the South Pole. The detectors are actually sunk down into boreholes into the ice. It's amazingly cool in any sort of interpretation of the word because there's very little noise down there. IceCube can tell us more about neutrinos and dark matter particles if they exist, which they may not. In summary, this plan of particle physicists is basically more of the same stuff that hasn't worked in the past four decades. Personally, I think what they should do is spend some money on serious theory development and then come up with some well-motivated experimental proposals rather than wasting more money. But then again, it's not my taxes which are being spent on it. Mine apparently subsidize coal. I might be warming up to those dark matter detectors. I'm sure you love science as much as I do, but what science really wants is that you understand it. And there's no better place to do that than on Brilliant.org. On Brilliant, you find courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. I even have my own course there. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. And all their courses are interactive with visualizations and follow-up questions. Brilliant 
really makes learning easy, fun and also convenient because you can do it whenever and wherever you like. And you can now try it for free for 30 days by using our link brilliant.org slash Sabine. The first 200 of you to use this link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give science some understanding. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.